Hello everyone. I am so happy to see you again. Valentine's Day is this week. So today, I think that you and I should treat ourselves to a very romantic, very elegant, but very simple afternoon tea. And we are going to start with the scones, which some people pronounce scones, but I say scones because I use the Scottish pronunciation. For the scones, I'm using three cups or 360 grams of the flour. I'm going to weigh it out. Then we need one tablespoon of baking powder. This is a teaspoon, so I'm going to use three of these. One teaspoon of salt. One third cup or 67 grams of regular granulated sugar. And then whisk. There is no butter in these scones, but there is heavy cream. One and a half cups or 350 mils. And to the cream, I'm going to add one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And because it's Valentine's Day, I'm going to add some red vegetable food coloring. We will see if this works out. This looks very beautiful to me. Now I will slowly add this pink cream to the flour mixture while stirring. If you have any dry bits of flour in the bottom of the bowl, moisten them with a tiny splash of cream. I need to gather this into a ball. I'm going to roll the scone dough on my pastry cloth. Now we need to roll this into a one inch thick circle. putting a little flour over here. Then I will dip my two inch diameter fluted biscuit cutter into the dough and transfer the rounds onto a parchment lined baking sheet. then re-roll the scraps as necessary. Actually, you can just press this out with the palm of your hand. You don't even need a rolling pin. I will link the recipe for these scones, minus the food coloring, in the description below. Several viewers have asked me how I wash this pastry cloth. I just throw it into the washing machine. This cream is pink because I poured it into the same measuring cup and there was some residual food coloring in it. The purpose of the cream is to encourage browning, but I'm not even sure that I want these scones to brown. I think they look very pretty in pink. And to gild this lily, I'm going to top the scones with some demerara sugar. <music> 
to encourage these scones to maintain their upright position during baking, I always put them in the freezer for 15 minutes before baking. Let me clean up my mess and then we can get started on the sandwich fillings. To save time, I made the egg salad off camera. You probably don't need a recipe for egg salad, right? All I have to do is add a little smoked paprika and mix it in. Now the other filling is coronation chicken, which we have made in the past, but we have not made it for a while. It is one of my all-time favorite tea sandwich fillings. I have two breasts from a rotisserie chicken here, just coarsely cutting them. And then into the food processor they go. Pulse. I just want to break up the chicken a bit. And then I will add one very generous tablespoon of this glorious stuff. It's mango chutney or mango chutney. Coronation chicken was invented for Queen Elizabeth's coronation in 1953. Next, a generous tablespoon of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of sour cream, and a quarter teaspoon of curry powder. Then I only have to blitz the ingredients. Let me give this a quick taste. Into a bowl. I love that we can make tea sandwich fillings well ahead of time. I just have to cover these and pop them into the refrigerator. To the refrigerator. Our sandwich fillings are done. I will assemble the sandwiches later. Right now, I want to make a run to the flower store to buy some roses for our tea table. Take a drive with me. We are home again. Here are the roses that we bought. And I just wanted to check that they coordinate with the three-tiered stand on which we will serve the sandwiches, scones, and a very special petit four. Impulse purchases. I bought two little primroses and I bought from Chatham Flowers this was definitely an impulse purchase. This magnificent fairy primrose. Oh, it has this wonderful fragrance. It smells like baby powder. 
we will put these in the upstairs window garden. The window garden that you and I created together last autumn has been a real blessing this winter. African violets and Kalankoe that we placed here have provided near constant bloom. And the hyacinths that you and I vased and chilled are now in various stages of bud and bloom. The sweet perfume from the hyacinths is truly exhilarating. Fragrant too are the grape hyacinths or muscari that you and I planted together in pebbles and water. If you missed the episode where we designed this window, I can put a link to it in the description below. Before we can arrange the roses, I need to fetch some greens from the garden out back. Come with me. floral preservative. And I need to fetch some newspaper to protect my work surface. prove to you that I read all of the comments. A viewer who saw me using my usual garden shears to cut flowers told me I should invest in a professional floral knife. So I bought a whole box of them. They were not expensive at all. It works. The viewer, I'm sorry, I cannot remember her name told me that when you use pruning shears on flowers, you actually squeeze the stem and rather close it so that the flower cannot take up water easily. But when you use one of these knives, you can cut at a sharp diagonal, create a lot of surface area in which water can pass through. This last rose goes directly in the middle. Let's bring these roses into the parlor. These scones were actually in the freezer for a good hour, so they are solidly frozen. It's time to bake them off. So I have preheated the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Normally these would bake in 12 to 15 minutes. Since they're solidly frozen, they will probably take 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to pop those in the oven and then we can get cracking on the sandwiches. And while the scones are baking, 
we can go ahead and assemble the sandwiches. Now, I did taste of this egg salad again, and it is crying out for coarsely ground black pepper. So I will honor its request. I made beer bread in yesterday's video. And although beer bread is great for many things, it is not great for tea sandwiches. So I bought some Pepperidge Farm white bread. I always butter each slice of bread so that the filling does not seep through. I do not want soggy sandwiches. The butter is a sealant. baby arugula leaves. Close the sandwiches. Press down gently. Then I need to trim off the crust. I always trim the crust after I fill the sandwiches because I want a clean edge. Fingers or triangles? I think fingers. Let's make triangles now. I am putting these sandwiches on the lower plate of this three-plate stand. Now we can start on the Coronation Chicken sandwiches, except there goes my oven. The scones are ready. I do not regret that I added pink food coloring to the scone dough. I think these are just beautiful. I'm going to let them cool over here. I should probably mention that none of the scraps will go to waste. For the coronation chicken, I'm using some thinly sliced whole wheat bread. Now, in the comments, let me know what you are doing for Valentine's Day. And if you think you can do nothing because you live alone, just remember, I am your Valentine's Day. On this second tier, I'm going to place the beautiful scones. And I need some clotted cream and strawberry jam. Now my local farm store actually started carrying clotted cream again, so I am very happy about that. Fortunately, the spoon doesn't fit in here. Clotted cream is actually very easy to make. You just pour cream into a shallow baking dish, and then you bake it at a low temperature for about 12 hours. It's much easier to buy clotted cream. Here's some strawberry jam. I just think these are the prettiest scones ever. Normally, we would place little petty four on the top of the stand. Let me show you what I bought. Since it is Valentine's Day, every supermarket carries these chocolate samplers. And I did buy two of these. I opened one of the boxes last night, ate five of the chocolates. They are really delicious.
look at these. One for you, one for me. We have only two things left to do. Start a fire in the parlor and brew some tea. This is Darjeeling tea from Tierra Farm. Into the parlor. I have already tasted of the sandwiches. Both are delicious, but the coronation chicken is outstanding. So let's tuck into one of the scones. Just a little rule of etiquette is to take the clotted cream, put it on your plate, do the same with the jam, In other words, we don't want to use our knife to touch the clotted cream or the jam and then touch the scone. A piece of scone, some clotted cream, a bit of jam, these scones are moist and delicious. I hope you will give them a try. And you and I have made many different scones throughout the years, so feel free to try some other version of scone if you like. Of course, the tea is absolutely wonderful. And you and I both know that the little petty fours are out of this world delicious. I ate five of them last night. Thank you for joining me today and I want to wish you the very best Valentine's Day. And if you need a date, call me. I can post a couple of my other videos at the end of this video that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, happy Valentine's Day to you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.